beautiful open to the journey into the presence of God for sharing that with us this morning. Thank you. So I want to speak to you for a few moments today on learning the rhythms of grace. I know you're already seated, but you can still turn to somebody and say that. <laughs> learning the, oh, I forgot a word, learning the unforced rhythms of grace. Just experiencing God's presence. Take a moment, if you will, and take a look at your hands. See the palm of your hands, fingers to thumbs. All that your hands are able to accomplish and to do, to build, to create, to make things. And yet as well, we recognize that they have the ability to do both good and evil. At times, as we shared with the, with the, with the girls this morning, we wish it weren't so. We wish it were always just for good, but sometimes it's not. I want to share a story with you this morning, a story about a serviceman. I don't know what service he was in, one of, one of the four. He came to a hospital to see a man, and as he got to the hospital, the busy nurse on the floor uh, jumped to a conclusion about who it was that he was there to see. So she hurried him into the room where there was an elderly man who was actively Dying. Actively dying is something we used a lot when we were in hospice. It's when you no longer are talking about months or years to live or even weeks to live. It's when you're talking about hours or minutes left to live. And so that service man sat at the man's bedside and he took his hand and he held that man's hand all through the night. And a number of occasions, the man called out his own son's name. And the man who was sitting there just continued to stay by his side, holding his hand, and occasionally sharing words of care and encouragement with him. And in the morning, the man died. And the serviceman went to find the nurse and talk to her, and he, he said to her, Who was that man? And she looked at him, startled, and says, Well, that was your father. And he said, No, I've never seen that man in my whole life. She said, But you stayed with him all night. You held his hand. You gave him words of encouragement. You, you, you were there with him the whole night. Why did you stay if that was not your father? Because he needed me there last night. The serviceman replied, because his own son couldn't be there. He found out what the man's name was and found out that he was indeed the person that he had come to see in the hospital that night. But as you know, when a service person comes, they're coming with news. He was there to tell the man that his son had died in combat. It was news that he never got to share with the man. But with his outstretched hand, he brought the man more comfort and peace than he ever could have if he had just carried out his duty. God's hand reaches out to us as well. Through those that God sends to us. Did you know that God still sends people to us? In our gospel, we hear it, we, we experience it, we see that people are coming to us, people like John the Baptist, and Jesus was sent as well. And yet, very often, just like the nurse doesn't know, she thinks she knows, we think we know, but too often we don't recognize the presence of God come to us with a special word in the ones that God sends. 
Because we have a preconceived notion of who God is and how God acts and what God looks like. So today in the Gospel, Jesus speaks hard words to us in those moments. He says to us, we're acting like spoiled children. The children who are trying to sing the song, we, we wanted you to play with us, but you were too tired. We wanted you to, to talk with us, but you were too busy. And Jesus said, that's just the way it is with the messengers that God sends to us so often. John the Baptist, they, they had a problem with him. Paul, we were talking about prophets the other night at, the, at, at your house at Bible study, and, and, and John was one of the last of the prophets, the way that we know the prophets, the ones who came with a message from God. And you remember the story, John the Baptist, as he uh, was out there in the wilderness, and he was eating uh, wild locusts and honey, and he was dressed in, in, in uh, skins, and, and people thought he was crazy. And they assigned him to the crazy heat. And that's the way they uh, did away with him. They, they put him aside. So they didn't listen to him. But Jesus said, but then I came. Jesus himself, he says, but I was the other side of it. I was too casual for them. I hang out with the wrong people, he said. Hang out with the riffraff and with, uh, with the, the drunkards and the gluttons. And, and so they called him one of those as well. And so the first picture on your bulletin this morning, if you look, there are two pictures. The first picture that you see, maybe it's God. Maybe it's us. I don't know, maybe it's Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> uh, right? With the face palm. And the face palm, what, what, what is that? The universal sign of? Oh, Lord. Oh, jeez, they just don't get it, huh? And that's kind of God right here, right now. Jeez, I, I can't believe they're missing it. They're not getting the message. Save me from these people, somebody. Or as in an earlier version before Jean-Luc Picard, it would have been what? Beat, Beat me, me up, Scott. <laughs> Get me out of here. I've had enough. And that comes as an indictment on us because we don't recognize the presence of in our very midst, in our daily lives. But you see how quickly then Jesus turns from indictment to forgiveness. He spends a moment in prayer, and then he turns to the people, and I love the word that the message uses here. It says that now he speaks to them tenderly. He speaks to them. He speaks to us. From the heart. He says, look, it's not hard, this thing. There is a rhythm to it. Feel the rhythm. Get into the rhythm. There's a rhythm of grace. And it doesn't need to be forced. It's just there. It's just, we have two great musicians here uh, this, this morning. You understand what I'm talking about, right? When the rhythm comes, when you feel it, it's just there. You don't have to force it. You don't have to try to get into the rhythm. It's just there, and you can just begin to dance, or to sing, or to play. You recognize that there's a rhythm even that involves sin, and grace, and forgiveness. It becomes part of a rhythm of life for us to recognize that God comes to us in ways that we don't expect. That's when we're out of rhythm, when we're not moving that way. But God comes to us to share with us this rhythm of life, just like Paul talked about it. He says, the good that I wanted to is the thing that I end up not doing. And the thing that I didn't want to do, that's what I end up doing, huh? And even as Paul says that we have to come to a place where we can recognize that God is trying to speak to us through messengers and messages that come to us every day and that we don't expect. And sometimes we walk right past them. I put in my notes here, OMG, <laughs> right? Oh my God. 
Does anybody else here need to hear this message? Because sometimes, you know, when a preacher writes a, a sermon and prepares a sermon, you realize that the first one that you're writing it for is yourself. How many times do I walk through situations and say, oh, jeez, get me out of here. When God is trying to say, child, here's the direction. This is my call to you. We need to be aware when God is speaking to us. And sometimes the reason we don't is because God speaks to us from people that we don't expect. God speaks to us from situations that we don't think there is anything there for us. But there it is, the second picture on your bulletin this morning. Right? The same palm that you were looking at before, now not in your face, but stretched out, reaching out. Offering, inviting, come, come unto me, all you that are tired and heavy and weary laden, I have a better way for you. I will give you rest, rest for your soul, rest for your spirit, come away with me. Because Paul recognizes that while we're not doing what it is that our heart wants us to do, that we can still turn to God. And he has an answer. He says, thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ, we have forgiveness of our sin. And part of our sin sometimes is just not listening to the voice of God when it's speaking. Zechariah paints a picture for us as well. In our lesson that we heard, read, oh, there she is behind the camera. I knew Marissa was around here somewhere. <laughs> When, when, when Marissa was reading it, and I love the fact that, you know, as, as she was reading it, talks to, to the daughters, even, right? Uh, and, and it talks to the prisoners of hope. It tells us that the king is coming victorious. Isn't that good news? Don't we all want the big king to come victorious? Except for one problem. Do you know what the problem is? He's riding. Excuse me for saying it this way. He's riding a damn donkey. I mean, what's going on with the king of the universe? You want him to be coming in a stretch limo. You want him to be coming on Air Force One. You want him to be coming in, in grandeur and in glory. And yet he's coming to us riding on a donkey. How are we going to accept that? But that's the point that Jesus is making. He comes to us in ways that we don't expect, that we're not anticipating, that we're not prepared for. And in the lowliest of ways, whether it be through a person, you know, we could go to the food pantry and serve somebody at the food pantry and find out it's the person at the food pantry that we are serving who teaches us something about God. Can you imagine that? It wasn't a professor from a seminary or a pastor or a preacher or a bishop, but somebody who was on the street who taught us something about God. Are we open? When Jesus says that he comes to us in ways that we don't expect, he says, everything is going to be all right. I'm taking care of you. I'm putting my yoke upon you, but my yoke is easy and my burden is light and things are going to work out. I'm going to give you rest. So I ask you this morning, where do you least expect to find God? And what would it mean for you this week as you go through the week if you think about the place where you least expect to find God, that your eyes, your inner eyes, your spiritual eyes, your physical eyes are open, and you have an experience of God's presence where you least expect it. That would be entering into the unforced rhythm of God's grace. I pray that for each of us in this week, as we go forth, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.